evening. Joining us right now, right now, David and I were looking forward to talking to him, especially after we had our interview with uh, <laughs> with Greg Pallast recently. That was pretty pretty disturbing about what might happen post the elections. Let's add David to the stream. David, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here, Juliana. How are you today? Well, we're a little nervous. I'm not we. I mean, me and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking for the entire America. country, <laughs> the entire country is nervous, not just about a potential Trump win or some potential Trump um, election tampering, but the post election white supremacist riots that are being planned on the internet by groups like the Patriot uh, Front and the Proud Boys and the other boys, the Boogaloo Boys. Talk about what is going on and what we might be seeing post election. Well, I, actually, I've, I've just been working on a piece for Daily Coast about uh, the I love study the Coast. <laughs> that uh, that uh, it's a study that just came out from the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project uh, that looked at the <laughs> basically looked at the levels of militia organizing that are going on around the country, and uh, yeah, I think everybody's very concerned. Um, is anybody? Five, I asked Greg Pallas. Is any five states that are at high risk? Uh, these include Georgia, Pennsylvania, Oregon. Um, trying to think the other oh, Michigan, uh, right? Minnesota, yeah, Mi obviously Michigan, and uh, uh, yeah, P Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Oregon. They, they, so, uh, I used to live in Oregon, one blue dot in the midst of a bunch of guns. <laughs> That's yeah, how I used to feel. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're planning not, on, does it, do we have any ideas on what kinds of things they're planning on doing? Well, we already got a little sample of it, of course, in Michigan with the, uh, the plot to kidnap the governor. Um, but, I, but I think that there is uh, probably going to be a bunch of stuff uh, directed at candidates and, Potentially polling places, you know, I don't know what they're going to do in a place like Oregon or Washington where it's all vote by mail. <laughs> so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, th there's a very high risk in those five states. There's five other states that are that are at uh, also uh, sort of a second tier of risk. But uh, fundamentally, uh, 28 of the 50 countries, or I'm sorry, 28 of the 50 states Ooh. are at high risk of having uh, this uh, election-related violence coming up. And I think it's, yeah, I, I don't think anybody's prepared for it. I, I especially don't think the media is prepared for it. I the, just went to BJ's. And bought a bulk pasta, so I'm prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I what think, do you do? I think in New York, you'll generally be okay. But I'm not in be, New York anymore. In these David. rural areas, and particularly in swing states, I think. Well, I I actually moved. I don't on. know. I I probably oh. didn't tell you that, but oh. now I oh. live in. Uh, a blue state with uh, red. Again, it's blue in the cities and red in the country. And I live right, in the country. Right. So. Oh, oh, so so I can't see you anymore when I go to Brooklyn. Correct. Well, <laughs> we can. <laughs> <laughs> correct. That's correct. We'll have to meet at eventually, maybe Netroots Nation again, like we once did yes, when yes. people were meeting at or, fr or Friday Harbor. There's always Friday oh, Harbor. Nick, we were supposed to come this year. Anyway, that's totally yeah. uh, <laughs> totally different story. Personal. Um, I, you know, I don't even know what to say to people. I would like people to be prepared, but in what way can people prepare for a, like a white supremacist civil strife moving toward civil war? Vote. I mean, that's the best thing we can do. Just vote these guys out. Just overwhelm them with our vote. That's and honestly, that's our only hope. What do you make uh, of I, that? I think if these guys, have, I think if you give these guys an inch, they will. You know, any kind of opening, they're going to try to crack it open. Uh, we've seen that. You know, I mean, we've seen the utter ruthlessness and the utter uh, lack of, you know, concern about democratic institutions and and decency and fair play that we've seen, not just from Trump, but from the U.S. Senate. 
and from all of these folks. And then, of course, it really filters down onto the street level with these, you know, Proud Boys and uh, Patriot Prayer types that uh, are basically going out and, and trying to create scenes of violence. I think it's important that we look at the rhetoric that they're actually using because yeah. some of, you know, the people, if you're not doing what James does on our, our channel here and going into 8chan and 4chan and every other chan that there is or doing the work that you do, you don't necessarily, you aren't aware of the kind of rhetoric that is out there. And BuzzFeed has done us a service. Yes. Uh, you know, did you see the article today? about? Yeah. That? Yeah. Patriot Front, yeah, that was actually, I think yesterday that that came out, but uh, yeah, and, and I've done a lot of work on Patriot Front when I uh, was at Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, I did their first piece on Patriot Front, and one of the things that was very clear about them from the very get-go is that they are uh, explicitly fascist. I mean, they, they say, we embrace fascism. Uh, fascism is what's right for America. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so when we use the word yeah. Trump is a fascist, they're like, great. So we're not helping when we when we label him. Well, that's right. Uh, the, the, you know, the, there's been a lot of easy bandying of the term, but but ultimately, I, I think that um, you know it, it it is coming down to fascism. You know, um, Do you I've, find I've, I've been using the word for years, and and as you know, I've gotten criticized for quite a bit. Yes, uh, but now uh, I. I don't think that uh, I think that you know. Generally speaking, I mean, I don't like to say "told you so," especially for something like this, because um, he told us you so. Though. You did. You warned us. Yeah. You, you, uh, I actually, I think you did a. You know, even though it might have this to make you feel better, even though it may have seemed like no one was listening at the time, you did the service of being out front, and uh, you just kept on with it so that people were ready to hear it when when it was time to hear it. Uh, ho hopefully, not a moment too late. I noticed in this picture of these. Uh, Patriot front people. They're j why didn't they just call themselves the KKK? I mean, they're wearing masks. They're wearing hats. I don't think these are anti-coronavirus masks. They're wearing sunglasses. They're basically covered in hoods. So and why they do they have to have a new name? Can't they just go by KKK? Well, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, they actually have a very different philosophy from the KKK. Let's just um, talk about that. Well, yeah, no, they're they're really explicitly fascist. I mean. The, the KKK, I would call basically proto-fascist, um, but um, you know, because although in a lot of regards, they were, you know, some f experts of fascism say that the KKK was the first fascist group hmm. um, back in the 1920s, and there's some reason to make that argument. Uh, but. Uh, these guys are, I mean, yeah, no, they're, they're full on straight up Nazi where they embrace the ethos of violence and, and uh, want to create an all white world. And Some of the quotes here, which I think are important to get across, if you haven't read the, read the article, um, you know, someone asked, what are your beliefs that led you to join the organization? At the core of my position are these principles. This is a member of the Patriot Front saying the categorical reject of the notion of equality. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. The categorical rejection of universal democracy, explicit in group preference. Yeah. And then another response is, in short, I cannot stand idly uh, by while my people fall into despair, degeneracy, and ethnic replacement. Mm -hmm. Reading these quotes just makes me think that sort of all of the talk about democracy, we all believe in it, and equality, we all believe in it, it is, you know, the wrong way to combat this kind of uh, assault on on the United States and its people, your thoughts? Sure. Well, I, I mean, Juliana, let's be honest. A lot of people are really invested emotionally in in feeling that you know things are still normal and that we can go back to a kind of normalcy. Um, but I don't think that that's uh, the case. I think eventually we can fight our way back to normalcy. Uh, but there's nothing normal about this. There's nothing um, that's you know redeemable about it. And and uh, you know, and the worst part is that we still have a lot of folks who are in denial about it. I mean, you got Glenn Greenwald going on Twitter and telling all of his follow million followers that 
you know, making fun of the people who are concerned about the rise of fa rise of fascism in the country. Well, wasn't he the first guy who worked at the ACLU who actually was like, you know what, these white patriots, they need, he defended the right of free speech of these guys. It's a he, little concerning. He, he wasn't at the ACLU. He did it uh, pro bono as an end. Uh, for the law firm in New York that he was working for. Oh, I th I'm sorry. And yeah, I thought... yeah, and he represented Matthew Hale, uh, who uh, was uh, World Church of the Creator uh, leader, one of the most vile and violent outfits uh, out there. I mean, if, if you're going to uh, defend Nazis like the ACL, you do, do at least a relatively harmless group like those Skokie Nazis. because they Right, that's right what I was thinking of. I was mixing my... Yeah. My, but, uh, I can't believe a left organization and a left person or a supposedly left Glenn, Glenn Greenwald no, uh, person. Well, that, that was basically the extent of Glenn's legal career. Hey, okay, that was his whole one, one case. case. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 And he, and he wound up with his, his client in prison, in federal prison. So <laughs> you, you recently reported on the arrest of Ivan Harrison Hunter. Talk about who he is and why it's important that he was actually taken into custody. Well, Hunter is what we call a boogaloo boy, and he's more in the militia mode. And this is a sort of a different zone of the, ra of the radical right than... Really? Um, I've lumped them all together as... Nuts. Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. But so I, I do... What's the difference? Know, well, the boogaloo slash militia types um, are not explicitly fascist. They're not. Um, they are. They're. They're more fascist in attitude and and in their thuggishness and in the sort of role that they be hit, play because they these guys are actually going to play a critical role uh, in this fascist movement or in this rise of fascism in the country by basically taking on the role of the black shirts and brown shirts did in the 20s and 30s for wow, an embarrassment the Nazis of and the fascists. That is a, their, their street paramilitary, their par, a paramilitary organization or movement. Uh, they bring guns into the, into the streets and uh, they engage in a lot of fighting, same as the Proud Boys. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, they all have sort of different roles to play in the mm -hmm. sort of fascist scenario. Um, Whereas Patriot Front is is just straight up, um, uh, yeah, they're they're like the you know, they're like the, the Gestapo, you know, they're really really nasty and insidious. Whereas there's a lot of guys who have joined the uh, yeah the deplorables for Trump. The uh, <laughs> I got the picture the, up for the, you. The militias <laughs> and the three percenters. And all of those guys, and mostly they really love the cosplay. You know, they like to dress up in camo and walk around with their guns. Uh, none of them are; uh, only a handful of them are actually competent. But I do always really that many. That. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised that they've managed to successfully recruit. A lot of people. Well, they're uh, not stupid. I mean, I, I, that was just kind of a joke. I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah well, you were going to say there's military people, ex-military involved. Yeah, yeah, who are highly competent. That's yes. what we call the sort of the McVeigh factor. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, most of these guys are buffoons and they blow themselves up when they try to set a bomb. But every <laughs> now and then you get somebody who's actually capable of handling material and weapons and uh, they blow up a truck bomb in Oklahoma City. I, uh, the president, I was reporting at the beginning of this segment that the president yesterday basically said three weeks out in one of his speech, you know, here's a quote, three weeks after the election, Joe Biden shot, then you have Kamala. Yeah, and I'm like, right, yeah. shot. What? What <laughs> uh, is, you know, he's he's all but encouraging white nationalist groups like these Boogaloo boys who use already violent tactics uh, to to is he? Saying shoot the well, president. and and they'll they'll claim as Trump seems to be here that you know if, if Biden gets hurt that it was actually Kamala's uh, people who did it. Kamala's but, big plan, yes. Yeah, so the yeah, blacks, yeah, the so, basically the socialists, <laughs> yeah, the socialists and communists. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. because that's who are yeah, the, have, the have people who want to plant more tre- the people who want to plant more trees, you know, and the environmentalists. They're <laughs> they're really the violent <laughs> people. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, and they want to also do your health care and Medicare and yeah, they want you to have health insurance. your social security. Yeah, but yeah, those are the violent ones. So. Um, we're seeing record voter turnout already, which is ho- uh, hopeful. Um, it seems like people are not deterred by the tactics of the Boogaloo boys. Your thoughts? Oh no. Well, I don't think I don't think they are. But what is going to happen is that that when they get involved, there's going to be tremendous amounts of chaos, and this that plays right into Trump's scenario. The more chaos he can create. Uh, the more openings he has, and particularly if he's going to claim you know, uh, high levels of social unrest and shut down the vote or shut down the vote counting, um, and you know send his DHS agents out into the streets. I mean, because they 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 already have just tons of people sitting around waiting. Uh, <laughs> incapable of uh, engaging in this sort of stuff on the street within the halls of government, uh, just in the ranks of uh, Customs and Border Patrol and um, and ICE, which are uh, two agencies that are just ridiculously overstaffed <laughs> and, and and have you know extreme high levels of employment. So they they've got this little army sitting there waiting. They also have, yes, the Street Fighters, the Boogaloo Boys. Oh, and I'm sorry, we did forget to get Hunter. Uh, Hunter was the guy, Ian Hunter was this guy from Texas who uh, uh, believed it, you know, was a participant in the Boogaloo uh, movement, which is all about uh, fomenting and creating civil war. Uh, You know, they're basically accelerationists. And uh, they want to uh, they they want to see it all fall apart. So uh, he traveled all the way from Texas to Minneapolis the night of or two days after George Floyd's death, and was uh, helped lead the attack on the Minneapolis police station. He f- fired off multiple rounds from his AK-47. He uh, and he participated, or at least said he participated in the arson of the police station. And these guys were going up there specifically uh, with the intent, not necessarily of uh, supporting the Black Lives Matter people, uh, but rather of uh, creating so much, uh, a lot of violence around the scene that could be blamed on the violent left, which we have been hearing for about from, from the mouth of the president himself. So, um, yeah, and they finally figured out, and, and we had been saying that a lot of the violence around the um, these protests was uh, was actually heightened stuff uh, mm-hmm. created by right wing extremists who were trying to basically make <laughs> make the left look bad. Yeah. We. We recently spoke to Greg Pallast on the show about the Brooks Brothers riot, which ended the election recount in Florida in 2000. How can we be sure that these white nationalists don't follow this that tactic this to. year? Absolutely going to. Well, what yeah, the hell? And, and, and they're, they're going to be, but there will be won't be guys in Brooks Brothers. There'll be guys in Fred Polo shirts, uh, or, or, or Fred, you know, in Polo <laughs> shirts, you know. Uh, Fred Perry polo shirts. Uh, the, Here's these guys, one. and there'll be in a dozen locations and a dozen different states where these um, things are being contested, mm-hmm. and they are going to engage in just uh, straight up fuckery. Well, you said a minute ago that the you know the DHS and ICE. Uh, you gave me the impression that they're all on the side of uh, you know. Did you say fuckery? I'll stick with that. Fuckery. Uh, Are are there any agencies? I mean, I hate to have to rely on our military. FBI. Uh, And are they doing anything? I mean, FBI. Yeah, the FBI is actually doing its job. Tell Uh, me more about that. Well, they're the guys. They're the ones who busted uh, Ian Hunter. They're the ones who've uh, been on top of. They've been busting a lot of these guys. 
and uh, the FBI is doing a pretty good job of staying on top of it. Uh, they recognize what the threat to the country is. And, uh, of course, if Trump wins re-election, Christopher Wray is going to get fired for this because he's actually oh. he's infuriated Trump by countering his, uh, you know, Trump's been out there trying to say, um, oh, it's the radical left that's causing all this violence and, and it's the radical left that's causing... You know this terror, this is a source of terrorism, and and Christopher Ray, God bless him, has been out. The FBI director has been out there saying, "No, the problem is white supremacists, nationalists, uh, and various other kinds of far right, far right extremists." Uh, there has been some violence around the left, but it's been very minor, and it, it, you know basically stepping all over Trump's. Uh, uh, Why hasn't he? Why do you think Trump hasn't fired him or now? He He's still dare. the president. He doesn't dare. It's before the election. Oh. He, he doesn't dare to. It'd be, he'd stink. Um, yeah, no, he's going to fire him after the election if, uh. if, there, you know, if, if he wins. Um, I mean, the, the FBI doesn't have the kind of military force that if the ICE agents and the other folks you mentioned just come off their leash and decide to oppress people, it's not like the FBI no. has. How do we? No, there's nothing they can do about that, uh, but but they are going to be a restraining factor for sure. Hi, Dave and I were. This was sort of hopeful and also sort of <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not terribly hopeful. I think we, I think Americans actually. I'm. This is getting down to it. I mean, I, I I've been hopeful uh, for quite a while, but I'm really starting to uh, to get seriously concerned about. Um, the Next levels week. of violence, yeah, not well, and the weeks after it, I, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I think you mentioned that, that I'm we're involved. Ag TV is working on a disinformation campaign with some very well organized people so that we can combat disinformation campaigns, obviously, Excellent. that are going to be coming out of the right. It's terrifying, first of all, to be the face of that, secondly, <laughs> then you know, and then. You know, we're privy to some information about that. It's not really just maybe, you know, something about this. Maybe you don't I'm kind of reporting it here. It's not really just these boogaloo boys and these other uh, white nationalist groups that are so that are looking to sow discord and unrest in the United States post the election. There are external um, uh, foreign groups who I are. Would be, uh, I know a couple of very good experts who would be really good for you to talk to about that. Okay, so, so when I'm done, uh, sorry, can you please uh, yeah. email me those? Because I would I like to, be to bring that person on as ASAP. Yes. That would be great. Thank you, David. David Nywert, investigative journalist, author of his new book. Don't forget to get it. Red Pill, uh, Blue Pill. Red Pill, Blue Pill. Yeah, an antidote to the conspiracy <laughs> theories that are killing us. If you want to hear me talk with David about that particular book, just go back on Act TV because we did a great interview interview about that particular book. And it was hopeful. Antidote is in the title. So yes. that's good. <laughs> hi, All, hi, right, hi. All right. Well, I'll talk to you afterwards, I guess. And uh, I, I hope you'll be sort of on call for us if we if we're able yeah. to to have you on because we need to we need to parse out. People need to know what's going on and we hope we can be of service in that way. All right. Thanks, Glad David. Appreciate it. David and I were don't forget to follow David on the internet. Um, you can find him. Well, he's on Daily Coast. On Twitter. And yeah, on Twitter. On Daily Coast, yep. Yeah. It's nice that they still let you be on Twitter. That's good. At David Nywert, N-E-I-W-E-R-T. That's a whole other thing. Thanks a lot for yes. watching. And thanks for joining us, David. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to Act TV. There's me. There's James. There's Messiah. There's Jocelyn. We're bringing you the kind of information that you need. Um, and we're going to try to hold your hand throughout this process uh, as we as we go as we go forward. Whew. You can follow me on Twitter, Juliana Forlano.